Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting knife review with George. Today, we're going to talk about the Spyderco Kali 3. This one has the laminated ZDP 189 steel and carbon fiber. So let's get to it. If you've seen any of my previous knife reviews, you will know that the first page is just uh, the specifications, which I won't actually um, go through in, in this review. We'll just put the details all the, all the information is in the description part of the video. You can read it yourself in, in your own time. Meanwhile, I would like to get to the, 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 the uh, details of the review. Now, first of all, uh, overall, the knife has very good ergonomics and, um, and it's, the build quality is, is quite, quite good overall. But I, I found some uh, flaws at, um, here and there. So, We'll, we'll actually go through uh, with it together. So anyways, the blade, um, it's good choice of the blade steel. Uh, it's a 189, a ZDP 189 uh, high carbon stainless steel. Uh, if you haven't actually been very aware of the knife, knife world, the ZDP 189 carbon, uh, high carbon stainless steel contains 3% carbon. And that's as, um, as high as carbon goes in a stainless steel really, or any steel as far as I can, I can find in the market. It has a very, very good edge retention and, um, and stainless re resistant property, uh, stain resistant property, excuse me. And um, I've actually had some experience with the ZDP 189, it maintains the edge really good. Anyways, um, the, blade, the blade obviously comes with the, the signature spidercle thumb hole and um, and if you want to, you can put a zip tie on the thumb hole around this region and uh, improvise this as an immersion uh, wave opening system. And watch my other reviews, I will explain in, de in detail what the wave system does. Anyways, the, um, obviously this uh, thumb hole also allows you to open left-handed or right-handed. And the edge, edge sharpness of this, this knife We'll actually just do a quick demonstration. It's a very, very good edge. Um, although there's, uh, as you can see, uh, at, at some part of the, the edge, there's a bit of an imperfection there. I will show you in detail later on in the negative section. And uh, the belly of the knife has a, has a very good belly as well. In my opinion, that makes it very, uh, cuts very well in terms of daily uses. And um, there's a finger trail on the on the front, and uh, there's a thumb right some thumb right ramp on the back. Excuse me, and the balls are jimped. As you can see, they have the fairly aggressive jimping from Spyderco, and that's very nice. So it gives you extra security. The overall blade length is three inches, and um, in some states and some countries, three inches long blade um, actually means it's legal to carry. I'm not really sure where exactly you are from, so that may or may not apply to you. Uh, uh, just overall, the, the size of the knife should probably not intimidate too many people if you use it in public, hopefully not. Uh, anyways, the handle, this implements a wire clip. Um, so it's basically just like a, steel, a stainless steel wire going along this line and uh, forming a clip. It's very, very um, light and also it's, it's functional as well. And um, I didn't mention that it, it can be mounted on both sides. Just take out that screw and uh, replace the wire clip uh, to the other side. And it's lock back. Um, that's a proven strength on the lock back. I, pretty much everyone knows what lock back is. Uh, now, there's a small detent here which uh, Spyderco sort of, uh, so basically it's marketed as this kind of like a safety feature. So should you be holding the knife very, very tight and uh, if your grip is accidentally pressed on the detent, uh, on, the, on the locking mechanism, it's very, very, uh, very, very little pressure um, will be applied to this thing accidentally from your thumb. So you won't have an accidental knife, uh, knife closing on you. Uh, really not too sure how well this feature will work because most of the time you you probably wouldn't press the knife so hard that it will actually 
disengage the lock, but having it there is definitely a good thing. I mean, it reduces some weight as well. Uh, there's a stainless steel liner on the, on the knife and it goes through the entire length. They hollowed out so you can see uh, inside there's, there's holes cut out everywhere to reduce the weight. And, um, and also the contoured handle provides a very, very good, uh, good grip. So you can see a slight sort of a, a finger trial here, a uh, finger guard. And um, the, the handle is very smooth. It's not like the, the sort of uh, stereotypical carbon fiber texture. And this is very smoothed out. So um, combining that feature and the pocket clip, which is also quite smooth. This thing doesn't wear out your pocket as much as uh, maybe um, say something like G10, uh, like, you know, the, the texture G10 would do. So that's very good as well. I think that's um, sort of like a feature for, for gentleman fo a gentleman's folder. And uh, as you can see on pivot, there is a, uh, there's a, a, there's a hex screw. Um, so that means it's going to be easier to find screwdrivers for it if you have to dis disassemble this knife. Also very nice. Uh, the negative things about this knife, overall, there's a couple of imperfections I'll show you. Um, so first start the edge. I don't know if the camera will pick it up so well. I think somewhere on the along this this line, when I cut the, cut the paper, you can you can sort of tell it it does somewhat next onto the onto the material. Yeah, so near the tip region, it's not too big a deal. There's there's a couple of other things here in, I would like to point out. Um, uh, the major thing is, as you can see from here, this angle, in deep inside the um, the blade tan. There's a black mark in there. That black mark actually is somewhat an imperfection. Um, I think maybe when they when they actually fuse the 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 four twenty J stainless steel onto the ZDP one eight nine, perhaps some um, imperfection got in there, or it was just not fit. It was just not finished properly, so resulting a, a black mark there. It's it's not something you would see if you're holding the knife, but if you're looking for an imperfection. You can definitely find it. Also, you can see um, slight sort of miss, hit and miss in here on the finger trial as well. So uh, for the for the price, I would say these imperfections were not very acceptable because it was not a cheap knife, and uh, it's made in Japan, and Japan was known for high quality material and craftsmanship. I don't know how they actually didn't detect this this problem, and. Um, Otherwise, the thumb hole on it, it's not a big thumb hole, so I can imagine if you have very big hands and, um, you know, um, having this thumb hole is probably not very easy to open. I, I have medium-sized hands, so it's, it's okay, not too bad. Anyways, um, otherwise, in terms of the handle, you know, only the pivot and the, the pockets, uh, pockets, uh, pocket clip screw uh, are fixed by the, uh, by by sort of screw construction. As you can see, it's interestingly, this screw is a, a Torx screw and that's a hex key. So I think potentially they could just make both screws uh, have to share the same screwdriver so you don't have to use two tools to open it. Um, but otherwise you can't take out the scale uh, entirely to clean the knife if you have to. That's, a, that's also a problem. And um, when I got this knife, the other thing is the pivot gets, gets loose. Um, I didn't actually carry this knife because it's uh, one, of my, one of my collection knives. And I, di I discovered that without using the knife or like carrying the knife, uh, the pivot on the side is sort of like, you can see it come off a uh, bit loose. So I used my own uh, tool to actually tighten it. And that's a problem I never had with my all, all, all my other high high end production knives because they don't just come loose by itself. Uh, my Benchmade knife had um, had a screw that's come loose, but it was because I me myself I adjusted that screw 
and probably they had a lock tight in there and um, that's how it messed up but but this thing i don't know if it had any lock tight but without me doing a funneling or anything it just got, goes a little bit loose by itself anyways um let's go to the next page There is no line at the hole, um, so in terms of if you go outdoors or anything, uh, you like line at the hole, nothing is offered in here. Um, I think potentially Spyderco could have, it's just something it would be nice to have, I think. But this is a sort of like a gentleman's folder, I think it's more of like an office, office friendly knife kind of style, so I didn't really think about the line at the hole maybe. And uh, it's, a, it's a small knife, even for my, for my hand, like it's, it's not a big knife for, for a medium sized hand. So if you do have big hands, this is probably not a knife for you. And obviously due to the fact it's liner lock, it's not flow through design. So uh, if you have a problem with that. And the fit and finish issue, um, as far as I remember when I first got a knife, because um, as, you can see, as you can imagine, the manufacturing process of making this knife will be putting the scales on the on this handle and then probably run the uh, run this entire scale with some sand belt or or some finishing mechanism uh, to send off all the in the differences between the handle handle scale and the, the liners and the, the backlog. They send belt through like all this stuff and that's fine but I think what, what happened was they did not have a process to remove the burr which uh, was caused to form in the inner in the edge of the um, of the scale, so I, when I had the knife, I felt like I can I got, if I run my finger in here, there's a sharp burr on the I can still feel it now actually, uh, there's a sharp burr on the on the stainless steel liners. So I, I used my my fingernail to actually scrape off like all the excessive burr. It, it was a bit of a process, but. It was done. So I think in terms of the, the price, this knife was, has to, um, you have to buy, you have to pay for really that sort of stuff shouldn't happen. The positive things based on speculation are there's a, a big belly here and it's a very, very easy to sharpen big belly knives. Um, in my opinion, especially if you use, use it on a bench stone, because it's going to, uh, it's going to touch all the all this uh, bunch of stone is going to touch the, the points on the, along the li line of uh, the edge e uh, much easier. And uh, the size of three inches is uh, basically reasonably good in terms of a public sort of uh, public view on whether this knife is a weapon or not. But don't get me, uh, don't use my quote. Um, find out what, what your local laws are. And uh, smooth carbon fiber finish. It's it's basically all smooth here and smoothed out, and and you you really don't have too much uh, don't don't have too much trouble to clean it, unlike the textured carbon fiber. And um, there's a stainless steel backspacer. Now this is the thing that I noticed only recently. Is that um, if you look in if you look in there, you can see the entire um. Knife is carbon fiber and then stainless steel and carbon fiber. Inside there is also carbon, uh, sorry. Uh, inside there is also stainless steel holding this, uh, the spring that, um, that, that's part of the, the mechanism. What this means is that as opposed to a, say for example, a Spyderco Endura. Um, this is a picture of a Spyderco Endura, also a very popular model. I've reviewed this knife before. Um, as you can see, a normal Endura is plastic here. So this is what's holding the, the, the spring. And uh, there, when I researched on internet, there has been people who said that their Endura broke because there was too much, uh, when they used the knife too hard, um, the pressure was um, pointing this direction. And the spring here actually the locking bar here actually pushed the spring so hard and it break this section of the plastic and that causes the lock failure as well, obviously. So basically, in other words, the plastic here holding the spring here is definitely not going to be as strong as a stainless steel structure in, inside, although it adds more weight. 
Um, so in, in that sense, this knife is, uh, it's got like a better, like a more strength than the, than the Endura, for example, in terms of the locking strength. Uh, at least as far as, you know, sort of put, like using the knife this way is concerned. I'm not too sure what will happen, say, if you use the knife pushing the uh, force this way. That will be a different story because that will entirely rely on the mechanism, uh, how, how the friction here is going to work. Anyways, uh, the negative things based on my speculation is it's carbon fiber on scale and um, people probably don't notice that carbon fiber actually fractures uh, under shock condition. Uh, they're not very, very tough. So if you, if you do drop this knife on concrete or anything, this carbon fiber will fracture. So that's something you should, you should know. If you're not careful with other things, maybe you don't get a carbon fiber scale knife. And um, so what that ha will actually happen, when that happens, you can see that this, this pocket clip here is actually held in together, basically counting on the fact that there's the two very sharp grooves cut in the, in the carbon fiber scales. And then you, you push the, the pocket clips into the screws. Um, if the carbon fiber fractures there, that potentially means, well, suddenly you, this thing, the pocket clip won't hold together very well. Something to, to think about. Um, so the other thing is, I was excited to get this knife, carbon fiber, space age material, what can it go wrong? Well, when I got the knife and, uh, and I pay attention, I realized as, as much as they try to hollow the, the sections inside this, this knife, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of holes, or at least not very decent sized holes inside this knife to actually cause a lot of uh, weight reduction. This knife, uh, given the fact that it's carbon fiber, it's a small knife, it could be a lot lighter than the, the, the weight it actually is. So this is actually three ounces. I think they can, if they pushed it, they can push this knife to like a 2.5 ounce easy. Just maybe um, cut, more, cut, cut more weight down from the, from the liners. But they didn't really strive for it. Three ounces is not too, too big a deal. But if you want to make a lightweight knife, you can, I think they can do better with carbon fiber. Um, so the other thing is, as you can see from this angle, uh, the screws are raised above the scales. So that's something maybe it could bother you or could not, I don't know, but, but um, on this side it's somewhat like a, got a bit of a sharp burr in there as well because of the screw. Uh, so that's something maybe you could you could pick on if you you are not really easily satisfied customer. Uh, I'd like to point out every single detail of my review just so you you wouldn't be surprised. Anyways, now coming down to the final conclusions, this knife is uh, very it's actually very very good like good looking, and it's got like a gentleman uh, knife sort of style uh, written all over it. As you can see, a very smooth handle, very classy carbon fiber pattern. There's a macro time. It's quite unique because the way it's finished, it's sort of like a run the sand belt uh, all the way through the length of the handle. Um, and it's a very small blade. And um, I'll say I, I, I was just a bit disappointed with a couple of, uh, you know, quality issues here on the over there on the on the black dot there and uh there's there's a problem here as well slightly and the edge is the edge is probably at least of my concern in terms of the quality issue um and if you look over here it says japan and that's that actually got me thinking that many of my spiritual knives were made in saki saki Jap saki city japan so this one only says Japan. I'm wondering if Spyderco has maybe uh, two factories in, in Japan and one is in Saka City, the other one is somewhere else. And um, both, both factory actually produces pretty decent quality knives. However, I've found uh, two of my Saki, actually three of my Saki City Japan knives. Uh, excuse me, the, uh, the three of my Japan Spyderco knives I'll have a, a slight bit of uh, issue with the, 
with the fit and finish um, or the sharpness. Whereas my Saki City Japan knives, they all perform very well in terms of the quality um, given the price. Um, so then maybe that's something to look forward, uh, look, look out for. Because if you buy a Spyderco knife uh, and you get to see it in person, perhaps um, you could have a look if they are made in Saki City Japan. And if they're not, um, have a look in detail if there's anything wrong with the knife before you buy it. If you are really, really into the details of those things. Otherwise, um, the Spyderco Saki City Japan knife or or the Spyderco Japanese made knives, they're both overall pretty good. Anyways, that concludes my review and I'll see you next time. Thank you.